One of the easiest ways to get started with scraping is to use Google Spreadsheets. Google Spreadsheets has a built-in formula which you can use to fetch data and other information from a particular web page. To begin, you're going to need two tabs open on your browser. Um, the Google Spreadsheet is going to be in one tab. This needs to be just a new Google Spreadsheet. It's empty to begin with. And then the other tab is the web page that you are going to scrape. So that's what I've got here. Here's my empty Google Spreadsheet. And in another tab, I've got a web page which is, um, I'm hoping I can scrape. Now it's not got a table in it, but it has got lots of information. And this is in a structured format. We can see the same patterns are repeated for each piece of information. And that's what we're going to want to grab. We're going to want to grab the names of all of these journalists and their perhaps their roles, perhaps their latest story. Um, we'll see what we can fetch. Now, the formula that we're going to use is called the import XML formula. And it looks like this. You start off by typing equals import XML in any of the cells on your spreadsheet. Then you open a pair of brackets and inside those brackets, you're going to need to include two pieces of information. Firstly, the URL of the web page that you want to scrape. And secondly, what's called the XPath. And between these two is a comma just to indicate that these are two separate pieces of information. Now the URL is a relatively straightforward piece of information, but what is this XPath? Well, XPath is a path. It's a path through the web page. It's a way that you can describe where the information is that you want to scrape. So I've included a couple of examples here just to give you an example of what I mean by that. Um, for example, if I wanted to grab all of the information in each P tag, paragraph tag on the web page, I would use the XPath slash slash P. That basically means grab all of the P tags. Alternatively, I could grab everything inside a table tag by saying table in XPath. And I can specify a combination of tags. So it might be that I don't want to grab all the tables, but I want to grab all the table rows. Now the HTML tag for a table row is TR, and that's always inside a table tag. So I might combine those two um, tags in a, a piece of XPath that describes that combination. Now you don't need to necessarily understand HTML to be able to use this. Obviously it does help, but um, all you have to do is be able to find the tags that you're interested in and then just use those names in a piece of XPath. This is what an import XML formula looks like. You can see here, we've got the pair of brackets with the two ingredients separated by a comma. It's worth highlighting here that the URL needs to be in quotation marks here and the XPath does as well. Now, actually, it's easier rather than typing these things directly into the formula. A useful tip is to use cell references instead. So instead of putting your URL inside quotation marks directly into the formula and the same with the XPath, you can put them in cells instead. And, and generally, I tend to put the URL in cell A1 and the XPath into cell B1. And this is what that would look like, for example. I've written the formula on the second row and put the um, URL and the XPath in the two cells above that. And we're going to go through this in a moment as we start to scrape our web page. So you can come back to this part of the video and, and revisit these points. But I just want to kind of introduce you to the general structure of what we're about to do. Now, one other thing to emphasize here is when you're pasting a URL into a cell, you don't need to put it into quotation marks. In fact, you shouldn't. And the same applies with the XPath. So let's look at our scraper here. And first of all, the first thing that you need to do is copy the URL of the um, page that you want to scrape. 
and I'm going to paste this into cell A1. And in cell B1, you'll remember that's where we're going to put our X path. Now, um, how do we know what X path to write? Well, um, to begin with, I'm just going to put P, double slash P. The double slash indicates the beginning of the path. And then the letter after that indicates the tag that we want. So now to start typing our formula and it's going to be import XML. It doesn't matter if it's in capitals or lowercase or a mix of those two. Then I'm going to open the brackets. You'll notice that Google Sheets actually tells you what the ingredients are. There's another third ingredient, but we're not going to use that. That's optional. And we're going to select A1, then a comma, then B1, and then we're going to close our brackets. Now, in some languages in uh, Google Sheets, uh, it will be a semicolon instead of a comma. I'm using a, a British version, English language version of uh, Google Sheets, so that uses a comma. So when I press enter, it's going to go to this URL and it's going to fetch any P tags and it's going to put the information here. So let's see what it finds. Okay, so it's found two P tags, which isn't a lot, quite often you would find more, um, but we can see that it's definitely working. It's fetched a paragraph that says catch up on TV bulletins and another paragraph that says meet the people who view uh, Channel 4 news. Let's see if we can find that. Well, there is that particular text. Um, we could look for the other one as well. But that does tell us that this is working. We've now actually already scraped some information from this web page. The big challenge is to work out the specific combination of tags that's going to get us the specific information that we need. And to do that, we need to look at the raw HTML under this page. Now, that isn't necessarily as intimidating as it might sound um, if you're not familiar with HTML, because what we're going to use is um, a find. We're going to try and find the words that we're interested in and then look at the tags around them. Now, there are two ways to look at the HTML under a page, or two main ways. One is to view the source of the web page, and you can do that by clicking on any empty area of a page and go to view page source and that will open up a new tab with the raw html now as i said this might be um, quite kind of overwhelming there's lots and lots of code here but that's not important because um, we want to find something in this we can just search it so press ctrl and f or command and f on a mac and search for the word that you're interested in now the first word that we're interested in here is Krishnan. You want to pick a specific one. So let's have a look where Krishnan is mentioned. And we can see here there's five mentions of this name, all in the same part of the page. And we can now start to see the HTML that surrounds them. So um, most of these, in fact, all of them apart from one, are actually inside some HTML, inside some links. So if this particular uh, mention is inside a link to a web page. Uh, this it looks like a link to an image because it ends in .jpg. The same with this and um, probably the same with this as well. Yes, .jpg. Then there's one here which is not coloured. It's not inside tags. And that's where we actually have the text Krishna and Guru Murphy. And we can see that's inside a tag that's called div. So we might try and grab all the divs in this page. Um, now you can tell that div is the tag because it's purple. It's also the first word after these triangular brackets. And if you're not familiar with HTML and, and obviously you're not familiar with XPath, this is where you might start to Google around a little bit. But we're going to try div. So I'm going to change this P to div and see what we get. OK, so again, this has worked. It's scraped something. But what we can see here is that all of this text is is grouped together. So Krishnan Guru Murphy is somewhere in there. And Guru Murphy presenter. What's happening here is that it's grabbing 
this div here, this div here, this div here, and basically, probably mainly this one out here, it's putting together a whole bunch of text. We want to be more specific about the particular div that we are targeting. Um, and there are a couple of ways of doing this. We could do this based on some additional information about this div. So, for example, we've got here class equals name. Other divs say things like class equals main, um, another class equals main, the div class equals receptacle body, layout wrapper, layout team, and so on, div class equals inner. So this does sound like something that, that's specifically a div that's going to contain the name of the presenter. So we could specify those attributes of the div. Another thing we could do is specify the combination of this tag with other tags surrounding it. So uh, this div is contained within an A tag. If I highlight that area, you can see that this A tag starts here and it ends here. So it actually contains the name. And that A tag uh, is one of the most common tags you'll find on websites. An A tag creates a link and it makes this text into a link. And if I hover over the name, we can see it does. It is a link. So A and then div. We could specify that combination. To do that, we um, start with the first tag, the outermost tag, which is A, and then we put another slash, there we go, another slash uh, between the two tags. So we're saying look for any A tags, and then within those, look for div tags. So if I press enter, that does seem to have worked. It's given us some empty cells as well, but that might be something we can just fix later on in, in cleaning it up. Also around this A, there's an LI. So we could use that as well. So we could, um, instead of saying A div, we could say LI slash A. So we're now moving um, outside of this div and we're grabbing the whole of this A tag and um, just A tags within LI tags. So let's see what we get with that. Okay, so we've picked up some other content as well and actually we've not been able to get what we wanted to begin with. So let's go back to our previous attempt. That might be good enough. That might be what we wanted. But let's try the other approach as well. I'll show you how you can target this attribute as well, class equals name. If we wanted to do that, let's go back to um, the div. And if we want to specify a particular attribute, then you put that in square brackets after the um, tag div, and then you put an at symbol and then it's exactly the same, class equals, in quotation marks, name. So we just paste that, then close the square brackets. So what we're specifying is that we want a div where the, the attribute class is name. And this time we've got an even better result. We've not got the gaps that we had before. We've got everyone nicely together. Now you can repeat that process for other pieces of information on the page as well. So you might want to get the role presenter. So we might look at presenter down here. Um, that seems to be within div class main. So we could grab that as well. Um, or other pieces of information that we wanted. But I, I wanted to um, stop there because that really gives you all the information that you need to start to work with import XML scrapers. And once again, the key points to bear in mind here are to search for the structure around the data, look for the tags, look for their attributes as well, um, particularly classes and IDs. Those are uh, often used to specify a particular type of information. And once you've got the basic idea, the basic principles, search for tutorials around the formula. So import XML, there's lots of useful tutorials out there to help with that. And also XPath, 
as well you'll find lots of tutorials and documentation on XPath as well. Now one final note about the import XML formula is that it won't work on every web page that you come across. Particular types of web pages um, cannot be scraped with this approach. For example, if a page is dynamically created, um, then uh, essentially that HTML that you're trying to fetch doesn't exist until you load the web page in a browser. And um, there's, no, there's not necessarily an easy way of spotting if a page is dynamic until you try to scrape it and it doesn't work. Really the way that you can tell that this probably is dynamic is if you start off with a very basic scraper that's looking for paragraph tags and it doesn't match the paragraph tags that you see on the page or likewise other common tags like A, um, then again it's likely that those paragraphs are being dynamically loaded from an external file. And there are techniques for trying to get that data but I'm not going to cover that in this video. Likewise, if the page needs cookies to store some information, for example, they are search results and the search results only last as long as you're searching, then again, that can't be scraped using import XML because import XML doesn't hold cookies. And finally, if you want to follow next links to multiple pages, then really that's going to be quite tricky to do in import XML as well.